Okay, now that we've covered the six basic types of chemical reactions, we're going to do an example problem here. This is a common type of problem that you might be given on an exam. And it's asking you for the following questions or directions, refer to the following incomplete chemical equation. So you can see we have an incomplete chemical equation. It has not been completed. The products are not written. So we are going to have to complete the equation and then balance it. So let's go step by step. Step one, it says complete the above equation. And we're going to assume that it's a double replacement precipitation reaction. Later, with enough practice, you'll become skilled enough that you will recognize the type of reaction it is without being told. But for now, I'll go ahead and tell you it's a double replacement precipitation reaction. So, we're going to complete the equation. To complete it, we first write the correct formulas for the products. So we cannot balance an equation until we have the correct products written. And the correct products have to have their correct formulas. So we check the product subscripts, and the product subscripts are determined by the correct formulas, not by the reagent subscripts. So just because there's a 2 here on this bromine, that doesn't necessarily mean that there's going to be a 2 on the bromine when we get over here. It may have a 2 as a subscript, but it may not. That's going to be determined by the charges on the species and balancing the charges to get the correct formula. And then we're going to include the appropriate state indicators on the products. And the way we do that is we look at solubility, and we will discuss solubility rules later. For now, I'll just tell you what is soluble and what is not soluble. So here we go. We're going to complete the equation. And assuming that it's a double replacement precipitation reaction, then we have two compounds. And in a double replacement precipitation reaction, the cation of this compound, the silver ion, and the magnesium cation of this compound will be switching places. So I'll end up having a silver going with a bromide and the magnesium going with a nitrate. So let's draw the silver with the bromide first. Silver is a plus one. And bromide ion is a minus one. So plus one and a minus one, they are already charged balanced. So that is the correct formula. And I'll go ahead and let you know for now that this is an insoluble compound. And therefore, it precipitates out as a solid. Now the other product would be if the magnesium ends up pairing up with the nitrate. Magnesium is a fixed charge at a 2 plus. Nitrate, polyatomic ion, has a 1 minus. So if I have a 2 plus and a 1 minus, that means I'm going to have two of these nitrates to balance out charges with the magnesium cation. So for two nitrates, this is one of those occasions where I have the parentheses and the two. Now I have two nitrate ions that are balancing out that one magnesium. And I'll tell you for now, this is soluble in water, so it will dissolve, it will be aqueous. Now that we have written the correct formulas with the correct subscripts, and the correct state indicators. We have completed the reaction, but we have not yet tried to balance it. Now that we've completed the reaction, we're going to balance it. And when we balance the equation, step two here, we leave the subscripts alone. We can never change these subscripts ever again. The subscripts are the way they are. They have to be these numbers in order to charge balance. And so I cannot change them now. The only thing I can change now 
to balance the equation are the coefficients. So we're going to be methodical. We're going to start from the far left, right here, with that silver, and proceed to the right. We're going to balance elements one at a time. And if we see that a polyatomic ion, like this nitrate, remains the same polyatomic ion, nitrate, on the product side of the equation, then we are going to treat that ion as if it were one species. We're not going to try to balance the nitrogens and then balance the oxygens. We're not going to try to do that. We're going to treat that nitrate as a single species, single species, and see how many of those we have. So here we go. We're starting from the far left. We're starting with the silver. One silver on the reagent side, one silver on the product side. The silvers are balanced, for now anyway. That may change because I may have to change something else as I go and then come back and fix uh, the silvers. But for now I have one silver, one silver. One nitrate ion, two nitrate ions. So I need a 2 over here. And I can only change the coefficients at this point, not the subscripts. So it says right here, start over at the beginning every time you change any coefficient. And the reason we do that is we want to make sure that if we have corrected something here to balance it, that we didn't mess up something that we had already fixed. So we start over at the beginning to confirm that our balancing is still working. So two silvers, one silver. Aha! So we changed the number of silvers and now we have to fix that. Two silvers, two silvers. Two nitrates, two nitrates. I'm continuing on methodically. One magnesium, one magnesium, two bromines, two bromines. So two silvers, two silvers, two nitrates, two nitrates, one magnesium, one magnesium, two bromines, two bromines, and it's balanced. Notice that I did not change the coefficient in front of these two species because that is understood to be a 1, and they are fine as 1s, and everything works out. So there I have completed a chemical reaction with the correct formulas, with the correct state indicators, and we'll talk more about that later when we get into solubility. And then, after I had the correct product formulas, then, and only then, could I go about balancing the equation. So that's basically how we balance the equations.